just had a note from Steve Martin. Um, uh, the Coping with Rejection seminar has been cancelled, so uh, apologies for that, fellas. Um, you know, you'll have to manage yourself. Gentlemen, clap, go crazy! It's only Swanies in the building, Swano! Come on! Here he is! Come on, Swanee, in your own time. <laughs> Steve Double walks faster than that, he does 20 miles a day. Come on, let's hear for Swanee! Here we go, Swanee. Look at you, I'm not gonna, not gonna be rude about you, you look mean. Um, <laughs> and you were a mean man. Well, uh, I was mixed We haven't up. got time to go right back through everything, but just give us a bit of an overview uh, of, uh, of things. Uh, well, my dad had mental health problems and uh, my mum had drink problems. Uh, my brother started getting in trouble with the police and there's lots of trouble going off at home. I went to school. Some kids picked up on how weak I was, decided to bully me. Uh, these bullies uh, took it out of school, there was older, bull older lads, and decided that they'd torture me. They used to take me up uh, a woods and rip my toenails out, uh, cut my privates, uh, beat me, whip me, tie me up, uh, just do some really terrible things to me, put ants in my eyes and all sorts, and then I had a terrible depression and couldn't sleep at night, I was only nine years old. When I got to 10, a, a paedophile started sexually abusing me for three years, there were a thousand times I was punished at his house and uh, got told to do all things. When I was 13, I, uh, I found drink and violence. I used my fist to protect myself. I come crazy, no school could handle me, no one could handle me. I uh, ended up mucking about with a big gang get involved in handling firearms and taking drugs and using vodka and didn't know where I were and who I were. But you ended up in prison? Ended up, yeah, ended up in prison. I was a dad by this time, I was a young man and lived with so much shame and guilt and anger and uh, come out of prison and lived on the streets and lived in people's city, on cities and fighting constantly. I don't know, I just... Uh, such an angry, mixed-up man. Okay, you're into tattoos. You became a tattoo artist. I did. Uh, I met a woman when I was 27, and, uh, you know, she was kind to me. She did every human effort to make me happy. She encouraged me to do what I've always wanted to do. My granddad was in the Navy, so uh, she encouraged me to be a tattoo artist. I got a tattoo studio. I got a beautiful wife. got five great, healthy kids. Driving the car I wanted to drive. Uh, uh, going on holidays I wanted to go on and uh, still decided uh, I wanted to commit suicide. And you met someone called Tyler and that was quite an encounter in your life that turned things around quite dramatically. I did. Uh, I met a guy when I was 40. I, I was hanging around with a lad who played the saxophone in a ska band and he introduced me to his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law was an American guy and uh, I had a chat with him over a pint and he just says that uh, God had brought him to England and I just says, you know, you lost your lost the plot, you know, how can God tell you to come to England? He says he was a born-again Christian, I took the mickey out of him. Then he looked at him and he says, uh, I've just had a word from the Lord. He was abused when he was 10 and uh, God's come to set the captured free and heal the brokenhearted. And uh, I denied it, of course, because I kept this secret that was poisoning me for years. I told him he was treading on territory where Gergo died and if he didn't shut, it, shut what he was saying up. He said he was apologised, but uh, something penetrated. He invited me to go to church. I said, no, you know, blue rinses go to church. I've been to funerals, weddings, they're boring, they do me at it. I ain't doing no like that. And uh, then one day I found myself asking if I could go to church. I, uh, I always have a bit of a laugh about this. You know, I went to church, I love the people, but I didn't like the God bit. Now I love the God, but I don't like the people. Present company accepted, obviously. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make any jokes at your expense. You look mean. Uh, <laughs> so how long into this did you decide I want a bit of this for myself? And was, was there a key moment? Right. Did... Second week went, uh, the pastor was talking and uh, I just 
just as if the old church was empty and there's just me. I don't know, I went into a different zone. I cried. Uh, I'm going to cry now. <laughs> First time in my life I cried. And just says, uh, help me. He, he, uh, he helped me. I heard in my vo- in a voice, you know, I never heard a hello, but I heard something in me say, uh, you're mine. Trust in me and I'll set you free. And uh, he set me free. Did things turn around straight away, was it? Massive, straight away. When I'm a new man. When I'm a completely new man, Jesus says that you're born again. The old is gone and the new has come. And I says to him, you know, take my hands, take my... You know, I want all of you. I went home and told my wife I'd come a Christian. She says, that's all right, but it's not for me. But the transformation in me was so amazing, so fast. The newspapers got in touch. Television got in touch. Uh, radio stations got in touch. And my wife seen such an amazing transformation. She dropped her knees and gave her life to Jesus five weeks after me. What sort of impact did it have on your mates? Any of your mates? But the massive, right scallies, a load of them. A massive impact because they'd all seen that I was a free man and they couldn't deny it. Uh, many of them come to me with their... Po- you know, I, I hanged around with a gang that was all hurting, stabbings and glassings. It was a regular thing in our life. And one by one, they all come to tell me the same pains and sufferings what I'd been through and didn't even know it. We, we hanged around with each other trying to stick up for each other, but all of us had pains and sufferings. And nearly every one of them's dropped to the knees and gave the life to Jesus. Changed man. Changed man. I go into schools, I go into prisons, I go into youth groups, alpha courses, everything. I tell everyone, don't try and work the old man out. Jesus will tell you in the new man is. Jesus is, the, is, is your saviour and he'll give you a new life. He don't rebuild broken walls, he gives you brand new. It's interesting, Swan, isn't it? Because so many people get scared of sharing their faith and the, 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 this word evangelism is this scary thing. But, but this word gospel is good news, isn't it? And, and uh, good news is for sharing. Good and news. It, it's infectious and you clearly do it here, there and everywhere. And who, who would argue with you? Uh, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's true, isn't it? It shouldn't be hard, should it? It's turned no, your life around. it's life-changing. It's life-changing. If there's a man in here that was on his edge last night when Cole called him, I tell you, you, you've, you that well, last night wasn't the only chance. Salvations for today, and I call anybody to come with. It was just sitting on the seat to come. Can I plug my book? Pick up the book. Let me just ask you this. I've got a couple of more questions. Okay. Uh, because we're a little bit over time. I've got to take my medication in four minutes. Uh, I tell you, it's hot up here. I'm leaking. Um, you, we, you, you talk, and we glossed over, and I know it's in the book, and the book is a tremendous read about all those things that happened before you came to Christ, and the abuse, and the, and the bullying, and the beating. What do you feel about forgiveness? Because it's kind of easy to say forgive and forget for people like me and not much as bad things has happened to me. As someone who's been to hell and back, which isn't probably an over exaggeration, is forgiveness an easy thing? Is it something you no. choose to do? <laughs> it's, a, it's an obedience to Christ. Uh, forgiveness is a dirty word. It makes you angry. You know, if anyone come to me with the word of forgiveness, they'd have a fight. Simple as, you know, not because I'm tough, because I was full of fear and full of anger and full of bitterness. It made me strike. It was, it was my slave. But uh, the book is only seven chapters on about the old man. The rest is about the new man. And there's own, there's, I've actually had to write two chapters about forgiveness because it's so important, so powerful. Brilliant. Uh, so the book is available. Show us yep. the cover so we can see it. Uh, no advertising, but this is a great book. You've got to get it, fellas. This is on the CVM stand, eight ninety nine. You'd love people to get them, get them into prisons, get them into schools, it's, all over the place. It's uh, changing people's lives. It's only been out six months. It's on its third print. It's uh, it's uh, doing amazing. You know, I've had people come to me and say, in February, my daughter was brought your book for Christmas Day. She ain't put a razor blade to her to a wrist since and it's just constant 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 uh it's got some amazing stories one story can i share one story i've yeah, got time Go uh, just one story that's in the book is a uh, is a uh, rachel's granddad was 93 and he's what i call an odd man i don't think an odd man is somebody who goes in the pub and has a fight i think they're a broken man i think an odd man's a man with an odd heart who's been told that at 14 and when he's down the pits he can't cry 
He's told at 17 he's got to go and fight and kill another man. That makes you hard, makes you very hard-hearted. And Rachel's dad, granddad was a very hard-hearted man. When he was 73, somebody swore to his wife. He says, he took a pickaxe handle. He says, if you ever swear at my wife again, I'll smash your face in with this. The man says, do it. He thrashed him. He hospitalized him. When he got arrested, he says, the man gave me a direct order. He was so hard and so strict. When he was 93, they took him into hospital with bowel cancer. He'd got two big tumors in, on his bowel and immediately they had to operate on him, but they didn't think he'd pass through. All the time I was in there, I was trying to tell uh, Bill that Jesus loved him. And he says, uh, I'm not good enough for Jesus. I says, yeah, that's your lies. That's the world that's told you that. Yourselves told you that. It's a load of lies. God is true, and he'll come to a humble man. Anyway, the next day, there was uh, going to operate him at, 10 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, and I was out running with my wife. I trained with my wife, and I was out running with her. And I heard the Lord say to me, go and put hands on Bill. It was 20 past 11. I was in a town and he was in a city in an hospital in the car parking. It's going to take me an hour and a half easy to get there. I says to Rachel, I've heard from the Lord. He says, go and put hands on your granddad. She says, be obedient, let's go. We went, we got to the hospital. Hour and a half later, I walked into the uh, ward and we says, we'll come to see Bill. They says, well, funny enough, you're very lucky because the operation's been cancelled for two hours. I thought, I knew that. And then, uh, and I just sat down and Bill was uh, half asleep and then he woke up and he went, how long have you been here? I says, I've just got here, Bill. I says, uh, uh, I've just had a word from the Lord. He went, what's he want? <laughs> I says, uh, I don't know, mate. He's just told me to pray for you. He says, get on with it then. And I just did no polish and just put hands on him and I says, oh, Heavenly Father, hold his hand through this operation. We love you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I kissed him. I walked out of the, the hospital and uh, Rachel says, what, what's that all about? I says, I don't know, but God does. Anyway, uh, they took him down to operating theatre. At seven o'clock at night, I got a phone call. Well, I didn't. Rachel's mum did, but long story. And uh, this says that they had to open Bill up and uh, when they did, there was no cancer in him and he wanted to see me immediately. Uh, then this is the bit then he asked for me to see him and I went to the hospital and I'm saying when Bill was an odd man Bill was an odd man I went to the hospital I got there and he was lying in his bed and I seen a new man And he says to me, Swanner, he says, when I was on Andesetti, he says, I met Jesus Christ. He says, he come and he touched my hand. He says, and love poured through me. And I'm a saved man. So I'm telling anyone out there, if you don't believe Jesus is true, if you think we're all in this for a gimmick, he's a living God. And he'll come to anybody who calls upon his precious name. God bless you. Swanee, stay there one minute, my old friend. Wow, what a story. Come on, it's Swano. Right, fellas, hang on a minute. Swanee, outstanding, absolutely brilliant. What a great communicator. And you would love to go to people's churches and tell your stories. People come and chat to you. um, Pick up a book. Don't pick it up. Buy it. Uh, It'll be after you. Um, One last question. People last night, it was wonderful to see people becoming Christians. Absolutely flipping fantastic. But there might be some guys still a bit on the edge. And you're, well, I'm not not 100% sure. And you can't prove the existence of God, but you can't disprove it. Uh, And still not 100% sure. What would you say in 60 seconds to someone thinking, I'm still not sure. What would you say to them? To see weep deep within your heart, go past your emotions and just deep, deeply go and say, Lord, help me. Forgive me of my sins and let me come home to you. He's your loving father. He wants a relationship with you. And Jesus is that connection to do it. If you're on the end of your chairs shaking, please man up. 
truthfully man up. Take your responsibilities. When I was a, a young man, I, wanted, I brought a stinking atmosphere into my house because I was a sad, broken man. And I had to man up and come the man Jesus asked me to be. So please, get off your seats and get on your knees in Jesus' precious name. Is there any man here who needs to come forward and kneel before the cross for the first time?